Today, I finally finished my raid farm so that I can get millions and millions of emeralds. To create the Emerald Palace, a building that will be home to all these stranded villagers. And since 1.18 broke my guardian farm, I build a brand new one because the palace needed loads and loads of prismarine. Also, I'm trying to hit 4 million subscribers this year, but the channel Happy Kids TV Nursery Rhymes is going to beat me there. So please, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe so that we can win the battle. To begin with, I need a cartographer. And you, good sir, are going to be the one. The one that I shall give a load of paper, then a load of glass and a compass. From there, I will fly to where this map leads. Hopefully, it's not going to be too far of a distance. It has not taken long at all, and already we are very, very close. Here it is. Now to put on my chest plate and explore the area. I'm here in search of one specific mob, and that is the evoker. Any of the other ones, they've just got to go. There's a second one in this room. And so from here, I will make a portal, which when I head through, brings me right there. Now to dig upwards. I'm remembering to break this portal first. Then put a ladder here and end up uh, like so. Build a new portal and they connect perfectly. From there, I can fly back home, grab loads of rails and make a track going all that way. Successfully made it to the portal and I'd leave us so it actually works. Next to get an evoker in a minecart and get him through the portal. Now for the risky part, I am uh, trapped in here with him, but I've got to try oh i've not... oh no what have i done it right all we should just mine up this because yeah i'm a bit of an idiot there we go we've got out okay you no we missed take two yes he's in and i will see you later he's now trapped in that little area time for take two with the second one that went a lot better than the first one. okay well i was gonna say it was just go, go through and this time i've got a thing set up although a vex has gone into it let's get him in now and then he can be sent on his way there we go now it's worked and uh, he's off Oh no, he's not off. Yes, he is off. And that's now two evokers in there. I will need two more eventually, but I'll just get them from another mansion some other time. Now that they're sorted, it's time to go for Notch Apple number 33. Let's get searching. The first of the pyramids has been found. I hope I don't have to search 40 of them like I did in the last episode. Well, as expected, the first one's got nothing. And the second one has given the same result. Same with the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. 10th, which very bizarrely also has a blacksmith in it. Not a very good one, though. Number 11 has been spotted, and number 11 has let me down, and so must be blown up. In fact, I have no rockets, that's how. <laughs> yeah, SP, don't do dangerous things like that to yourself. Yeah, you, uh, you don't want to end up down there. Same in the 12th. Ah, and there we go. In the 13th one, we've got it. That was certainly a lot faster than the searching in the last episode was. So now to head back home. Let's add that to the wall, and then I can head back to the nether and repair all my stuff. That is all now repaired. So it's time I get back to work on this raid farm, which will involve adding more snow and more ice. Right here, I'm building the place where the mobs will get taken out and all of their loot will go, and it's going to be mirrored on both sides. And right here is going to be the place that the player stands. And basically, there'll be a minecart on this hopper and breaking that will stack the raids and make the farm work. And this massive glass platform is going to have things like like beacons, and the evokers will be trapped on here, which will stop vexes from being able to spawn and take me out. The giant quadruple beacon is now being built, and this is now complete. You know, something tells me I've... <laughs> <laughs> I've not done this quite right. One level of iron blocks too many. And now it is complete. And I can get all of the effects that I need. And this will also need to be completely spawn proof with glass. And that includes the top of the beacons as well. And now it's time to build up the places where the mobs are going to be falling. This right here is the exact place that the player is going to stand. And that head is going to be for alignment. And this right here is where all the redstone will be that will push the pillagers downwards. I've now built this up as high as I want to right now. Because next I'm going to be doing something that involves a, <laughs> a bit of blowing up. Now this floating snow that's going to be up here is key to the farm but I will need some end stone and an end crystal to do it. I brought plenty of end crystals, but I completely forgot about the end stone. So the floating snow is going to be all the way up here. So along here, there's going to be sticky pistons and then a bit of glass right here with the stairs on the side that's on fire. Redstone dust on top of here with a lever at the end. End crystal right there. And <laughs> if all this goes to plan, when I flick the lever, everything should blow up. And look at that, we've got a load of headless pistons. So then there needs to be a bunch of normal pistons underneath these headless ones, powered by blocks of redstone that have slime on on top of them. I wish you guys would get lost. I'm trying to do something quite complicated right now. <laughs> this is the last time you bother me. This is where I need the most important thing, but I <laughs> completely forgot it. The actual snow itself, which goes on top of the pistons. And I have to place all of the blocks that are going to be touching the snow now. Otherwise, the snow will get updated and stop floating if I were to do it afterwards. But now that it's all sorted, if I flick this lever, watch the pistons. Okay, they all detract and... Yeah, <laughs> well, that's floating snow. We've, we fell straight through. If I now carefully fly back up, all of this can be removed. Just need to make sure I don't touch the glass or these quartz bricks. And that is mission accomplished. Well, it will be mission accomplished, but I've got to do the exact same thing on this side. And to keep the floating snow on this side safe from the end crystal that's going to explode, I'm going to make a really big obsidian wall so that 
you know, nothing can get through. At least in theory, nothing should be able to get through. I'm hoping this will be enough because I need one piece of obsidian left. Now it's just rinse and repeat on this side. It's actually quite difficult to tell if all of this is in the way or not. I think it might be. Plan B is to do a little bit of mining. Oh no, it's not actually. No, you know what? That needs to... Do. You know what? Let's just see what happens. I've never done this before, but honestly, what is the worst that could happen? So we extend them. <sighs> Did it work? Let's see. Me snow as... <laughs> it's completely gone. Oh, so some blocks did still manage to break. Not a problem. I will sort that out once I've done this side. There we go. Floating snow 2.0. Okay, yeah, well, you, uh, you know it's floating when you fall through. Now to head to this ender chest. Grab more obsidian. And this time I will truly make a wall that cannot be broken. Now I'm pretty hopeful that take two... Okay, <laughs> I got that completely wrong. Hopefully that hasn't just scuppered it. That needs to be lit on fire. Then we're going to do that. Now... We push this. Yeah, something's definitely gone majorly wrong. Hopefully from here it doesn't hurt me too much. It's just going to blow everything up. It's... Actually, it's not too bad. But disaster has struck again. <laughs> One of them broke. Are you kidding me? Come to realise that a massive obsidian wall is, is not the most effective way to do this. So if I put a stairs there, light it on fire, end crystal here, flick that, and I've got a load of headless pistons. And if I just put obsidian here, That'll protect the headless pistons. And then I can do the same thing on this side. This side can be the first one to actually get floating snow as well. There we go. That is now done. Let's add the snow to this side and all of the blocks. Click the lever, break the redstone, and enjoy my two bits of floating snow. And now to get back to layering this up below it. And I've now built up all the way to the level of the floating snow, which means that there isn't that many levels left to go. And right here is where the portals will be that will get rid of the ravagers. And that is this part of the farm more or less done. There will still be some building to do on the other side side the portals of course but so far it has been an absolutely monstrous project still got all the fun to come with adding the evokers but first i'm going to build the portals in the nether and quickly before i forget i do also need to remember to fill these 10 dispensers with water buckets and i'm also going to go ahead and grab all of the shulker box of lava there's one here two more right here right here is the place for the portal let's see if it connects Yep, it has connected perfectly. So now I'm going to nip back to my house, grab loads more blocks, and build a massive lava room to deal with the many, many ravagers that will be coming through this portal. And that is this massive lava box complete. It will not go well for any ravagers that go through this portal. My two evokers are still patiently waiting there, but I do still need two more. So I'm going to drop off my stuff, do even more trading with a cartographer so that I can get another woodland mansion map and track it down for more evokers. Now, this is a strange one. I have just flown over woodland mansion. Oh, okay. The map was just lagging. <laughs> Never mind then. We have, uh, we've made it to the mansion. We've got one evoker in there and another one right here. In fact, very conveniently, there is one in there as well. So both of these rooms. In that case, I will build a portal right here which should be perfect for getting them through then to remake the portal on the roof next there must be rails going all that way and i have now connected up the line to the previous one and that is evoker number one going through and away he goes and also evoker number two and now that i have all of you guys it is time to do the final part of the farm which involves walls going around like this this right here is going to be the place that stops vexes from being able to spawn and get at me and that's why we move four evokers all the way over here so dispenser facing down like that followed by six boats being put inside it then we're just going to dispense them all break the bottom one remove the water and these five boats will catch all of the vexes and now to do the exact same thing over the other four gaps that has now been done successfully and must be completed in three more spots and that is every single one of the boats in everywhere now for the even more fun task of getting the evokers let's build a portal right here and a rail system for them to travel on we're going to attempt to swap that like that there we go they're off. There are vexes everywhere. And this first guy can be sent on through. In you go. I'm kind of getting used to transporting these guys now. He is successfully in position. And look at that. He's summoning vexes. <laughs> it's no use. They're just going in the boats. So that means I can set things up for evoker number two. And in goes evoker number two. As well as the third one. And finally the fourth. Okay, not finally the fourth. I misaligned it. Did I really have to fall right at the last hurdle? Go on, you get in there. That's it. He's not quite perfect in the center, but it seems that none of his vexes can escape. Now, the very final thing to be done, grab a few pumpkins and then spawn in some golems so that the evokers will be distracted. Don't, don't go after him. Don't go. What are you doing? I'm going to be honest, mate. At this point, you're a lost cause. I know you're just trying to do your job, but uh, you're going to have to go. Take two, and this time he should fall straight in. And now, as you can see, he is going for the golem. So when I'm stood here, he doesn't care about me. 
Okay, wait, is he looking at me now? No, oh, there, there you go. Doesn't care about me. Now to add another one right here. One here, and finally one here. As long as I don't go too near the golems, they won't be able to take any damage. Let's gather up all of the shulker boxes, remove this portal, and then to add minecarts to this dispenser. And I probably want to mend my armor before I test this farm, just in case anything was to go wrong and I needed the armor. I, I really don't want this to break because it's, it's very difficult to get. Everything is now repaired. Let's turn off the mob switch, take out a pillager captain, and test out the farm. So I just stand right here and keep breaking the minecart. As you can see, all the raiders are falling and being taken out around me. Now I'm going to stop breaking the minecart, and these mobs will just happily chill here and, uh, and, 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 you know, there'll be no problem. Because to set up the storage system, you need, like, 29 stacks of every item. You can see from that already, we got loads and loads of stuff. But now I will add a few chests, along with hoppers, and run the farm even more so that I can get loads more items to go in those chests. I also might have made another mistake. Yeah, there's a hopper under here, and it's, um, it's taking all the items... And then putting them in here. <laughs> Sometimes my stupidity really knows no boundaries. Pretty sure I've now fixed all the problems and everything is back to how it should be. Any items that float along here will go into these chests. So now let's get serious and run the farm for a bit. Well, quite a bit of time has passed. I'm just going to leave all those guys in there so I can carry on the machine later. And as you can see, I have got so, so many emeralds and plenty of glowstone and redstone in here. Now, in order to finish this sorting system, each of these individual rows of item sorters needs to be filled with 29 stacks of items. So hopefully I have enough emeralds to do that on a few of them. It's like I have to break into all of these emeralds to do it. I've sort of done it on this one, but because the hubs are going into the chest right now, I'd, I'd need to move all that first. So I'll just carry on filling them up from here. There's going to be 15 ones for emeralds, but whether or not I'll have enough for this <laughs> remains to be seen. And unfortunately, I have used up all my emeralds, so I'll spend a little bit more time using the farm. And with these extra emeralds, I can fill up more hoppers. I'm getting very, very close to doing them all. I'll just keep going a little bit more. And that is all of the emeralds that I need successfully added. And with these spare ones, I can head back home and finally fix the floor of my house. You guys have had to wait a long time for me to do this, but finally it's back to how it should be. And whilst I'm here, I might as well fix this treasure room as well. That looks so, so much better. Now for the next filters, I'm going to grab loads of sticks and also head to spawn to grab even more sticks and also mine up a bunch of trees. Now I can take all of that wood, craft it into sticks and fill up some more of these hoppers. All of the sticks are now in. Now for the gunpowder, the glowstone dust, redstone and all the rest of the items as well. And I still haven't quite got enough of all of the these kind of items. So I will continue using the farm until I do have enough. I've spent even longer at this farm now. If I just grab the items that I have been filtering into here, I can continue filling up these hoppers. And except for a few more glass bottles and spider eyes, the entire system has been filled up <laughs> with the necessary items. I actually think it's taken me longer to fill up the system than it did to actually build the farm. But I've had enough of that for now. I will finish it all later. Instead, I'm going to fly through this massive blizzard all the way back to my house because I've got another project that I want to be cracking on with. I just head to this nether portal right here. You'll remember that last episode we built this cracking nether hub. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's even got a cool slice portal in the middle. And the reason I need all that glowstone from the raid farm is to make all these respawn anchor floors, which we will sort out later. But before that, you've got to realise, I mean, look at it. It's great until you, you have to leave and then you just, look at it. Yeah, it's just, it's just not right. So, Really, I need to make some tunnels. And the first tunnel can be the one to my EOL farm. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up making the tunnels too high and it's just going to be too much hard work. So if I instead head to the blackstone area, which is right here. Yes, we've got these shulker box. And in there, I've got I've got two pieces of polished blackstone. I, I came all that way for two. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab a sea lantern, as well as a couple of trapdoors and plenty of basalt. And I might regret this next bit because the tunnels are they are going to be quite long. But I wish to do quite a lot of decorations on the walls. Slab floors are also useful because then no mobs can spawn. And this right here is where the sea lantern is going to go. We're going to do something like that. Trap door in front and then some polished black stone on like that. Now that that comes a bit lower, I won't have to build the ceiling quite so high for the tunnels. And I'm thinking we do a similar thing to that along here. So something like this up. Oh. To, okay, that's, that's not right. I was saying that's up to there. I'll put a little bit of blackstone like that. And another basalt pillar. Now to repeat the same thing on this side. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is coming together nicely. Next, I'm thinking it's time to grab the stairs. And they can go along here like that. Oh, don't fall. I'll tell you, there's just hazards everywhere nowadays. Maybe if I actually extended this platform, building would be a little easier. This tree is also going to have to go. Although I'm not even sure if you call them trees in the nether. Well, that crimson plant, whatever you want to call it, is now off the face of the... Well, it's not off the face, but it's, it's severe shortened and my pathway is being extended further and further. I reckon this block here could also be a stairs. 
Yeah, that, I think that looks a bit better. It'll just go in line better with everything else. And I think one of the biggest things I'm going to be doing here is a lot of mining. This bit in between everything will not be covered in lava. Okay, that's, that is not ideal. <laughs> I can't even reach it now. What's going on here? There we go. Now, as I was saying, that is going to be warped wart block. It was a pain collecting it all for that roof up there. And it's probably going to be a pain collecting it all for this roof right here. And since I am going to need such a lot of this, and I, I, I'm SB737, I have a, a farm for everything. But apparently not a farm for warped wart because I, I never thought I'd need it. So I'm going to add a bit more to these walls using this polished basalt. Wow, there's just lava everywhere in the nether, isn't there? As I was saying, polished basalt will make up these walls. And if I place netherrack all the way along here, I can create pillars going all the way along. And I think, you know, that's a little low TT on the pillars, so I'm going to make it so that every three there's a pillar. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's definitely a better design choice. Slabs can fill in the gaps. And you guessed it, I'm going to mine up a little bit more warped wart, hopefully for the final time, and place it behind like this. This is more or less how the tunnel is going to look. It's starting to come together. Let's also repeat it on the other side. This bit right here does kind of look a bit strange because it doesn't doesn't fit the rest. So I think that should go like that. Yeah, that is definitely <laughs> things to prove. It's like there's no right way to do it. What if what if we just go all out and oh no, we can't do that. First we need you, and then and then you know, just make a state. You know we could do that all the way along. You know I'm just giving myself more work, but I think it'll be worth it. This is basically the equivalent of being in the mind of SB. Although now when I compare both sides, like I, I think maybe this side looks better and it's less work. So sorry this this plan is um. It's going back to the original. And for the final piece of the puzzle, I'm going to go through my little sliced portal, grab some lanterns and also craft chains. And then these gaps can have chains with lanterns dangling off the edge of them. Probably going to be easy if I just place all the chains first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is not what I was trying to do. Instead, let's actually make the chains fall from the ceiling. This is what I get for trying to speed things up. It ultimately just ends up taking longer than it should have done. But despite the mishaps, they've all been added in. And I think I like it. I might I might do something like this on all of these bits. Just bring it to life with a little extra detail. But I feel like these corridors definitely complement the main room, which is exactly what I want. And before I go any further, the lack of extra warped warp blocks is definitely going to become a problem. So I will head back through this portal. Get rid of these chickens in here. I have absolutely no idea how you got in here, but you, you're not supposed to be here. Apparently, I didn't think chicken was good enough to have a chest for it, so <laughs> it's going to have to go into the shulker box. Yes, the food shulker box. I, I mean, I don't know why it's going to go in there, but that's that's going to be the plan. Feathers to the sorter. And if this becomes a chicken, the, the chicken may live. Uh, you, there's nothing there. Once again, I am getting somewhat sidetracked. But yeah, before we can go any further, we need to make a warped wart block farm. That is one heck of a tongue twister. <laughs> and in order to build this farm, that'll be how I'll be referring to it from now on. I'm going to need 12 warped nylium blocks. And just in case I need any more, I might as well grab loads. I came for 12 and left with a stack. Here's all the items that I'm going to be needing. I think building it at spawn is going to be the best idea because then it should still be running in the background if my calculations are correct. I mean, I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure. So I'm hoping that's the case. This one does not use TNT duplication because I prefer not to use TNT dupers when I'm building farms. Now, when I'm when making a perimeter, obviously, there's not much choice but to use those. Or I could mine it by hand, but that'd take me about six million years. But when it comes to farming resources, there are alternatives, so that's what we'll be using. The game also goes extremely laggy over here. What is going on over there? <laughs> it would seem that somehow a shulker has escaped. Now, you are, you are not meant to be here, good sir. And you are going to have to be asked to leave. And right here is where this new build can be. A lot of these blocks right here are just down as guidelines for where I'm going to put the warped nylium. There's also going to be some on the corners of these blocks as well. Now for the dispensers, which are going to be full of bone meal. Well, I'll, I'll fill them up later anyway. Then all of these blocks can be removed. Redstone into various comparators will be like this. Oh, I cannot like that. Instead like that and these four blocks will be removed with torches on the sides and I, I might have known you guys would show up every night. I'm sick to death of it. I'll get rid of you for now but there'll probably be more to come later. Now on top of each torch let's go like that and add some observers. Yeah things are gonna get a little bit noisy for a bit but you know what it's gotta be there. And you thought things were noisy before but <laughs> don't worry it's gonna get worse because I'm going to need four of these underneath every single one. At least these ones aren't going off. And now there's three of you guys. What's going on? Let's get these wired up so that we can have some peace. Speaking of peace, to get away from those guys, look at them just chasing. You guys are not following me all this way because I can outfly you all. Haha. <laughs> anyway, the best way for me to get some peace is to get some sleep. And then I can return to building. All right, you know what? Something went wrong there. <laughs> There's going to be some blocks here that block any signals from getting up. And I also don't think I need the nylon there, so I'm going to move those on as well. And add in more redstone. Yeah, that, that's much better. And there's a little bit more redstone wiring to be done on this end. And look at that. That's made a nice clock now, which is good to slow it down 
I am going to go ahead and put a repeater there. There we go. They also all move together now, which, which looks way more satisfying. And I shall continue building. The redstone for this bit is now fully finished. And this is going to be on off switch right here with this piston. But for now, I'm going to temporarily place that block there because we, <laughs> I don't want this going on and off whilst I'm trying to build. This glass platform is going to go right around here like so. And then there's going to be an obsidian platform right above it. And the plants should be able to bone meal through the obsidian. This is the basin that will catch everything and there's going to be water all the way along here. Of course, I, I didn't think about this. We're in a snowy biome and it's, <laughs> it's all freezing. But to solve that, there is a very, very simple solution. I just simply have to fly on back home like so, go down to my storage room and grab a bunch of signs. Because of course, a water source block will freeze. But a water logged block... Well, that can't freeze at all, can it? So there's going to need to be signs all the way along here. And if I also add more water on this side, they can all be waterlogged as well. As you can see, everything is meeting in the middle. Now, I do want to break some blocks, but <laughs> yeah, water will just go everywhere if I do that. So instead, I want to block up the water and I can mine up all this obsidian in the middle without any worry. Now, in this gap, there can be hoppers, which will nicely collect up all the items from this farm. I can also mine up all of this and release the water. And we know it's working because look at that. All the concrete is just going straight into the hoppers. Might as well stick a chest at the bottom here. And that is this system complete. And in theory, if I go and grab some bone meal, which I'll just steal from the tree farm, it's no, it's no big deal, and place a stack in each dispenser, then in theory, the beginnings of the farm should be working... <laughs> Time will Yes, it works! Okay, I'm so glad that that worked. It's really quite crazy though when you look at it. Like, look, straight through the obsidian, the plant has grown. It's really cool. As you can see, sometimes it just makes these little roots and sometimes it will make a tree. But now we need a system to get rid of the trees. First things first, we're going to build a nice little hopper clock, which is apparently a, a little bit too close to the lever. Take two on building a nice little hopper clock. This clock is going to contain 40 items. So if we go like that, it will be going backwards and forwards. Now to wire this into the main machine and destroy a bit of this mountain. Although to be fair, if it's a mountain yeah this, this could be the world's smallest mountain <laughs> guys you, you saw it here first anyway torch here repeater coming out of it this is where we have the torch tower that's going to go up to the thing that the, will dispense tnt there really is no easy way to make one of these unless just you just do something like this now i've made it to the top there's a bit more redstone to be done and a few more torches to be placed using the piston and sand we can create a nice little multi-pulse generator and this is where my dispenser is going to be i'm just using walls for alignment here and the dispenser right here will have tnt in it and it will dispense them down here and blow up the trees. And I want to create an extra one of these above the first one as well. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to create and I, I can actually use them below to, uh, to get the exact right alignment. And in theory, unless I've done something very stupid, all of this up here should be done. TNT will be aligned and fall straight down here. I think I just need a little bit of extra redstone down here as well, like that. Last bit of redstone is just a second pulse like this. And that is more or less the farm complete. I'll just remove all this dirt and head back to my house so that I can grab loads of bones for bone meal and also gunpowder for TNT. There's a little bit of TNT I want to grab from here as well. I am completely out of sand, as you can see from this right here, which is a slight problem. Although that slight problem can easily be solved if I just fly through this tunnel and harvest loads of the sand from this desert. People always tell me about sand dupers that I can make, but I don't really want to ever use a sand duper. Like if I'm willing to duplicate sand, like why don't I just use duplication glitches to duplicate anything? Yeah, I have my own set of rules of what I do and don't want to do in this world. I don't know, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but it's my world, I can do what I want. Let's load the shulker box up with sand. If I start doing some crafting, all of that TNT should be enough for now. So let's load up the TNT, add in lots more bone meal, and there's one more thing I forgot about that I'm definitely going to need. I don't think I actually have any of it spare at the moment, so I'm going to steal some of the ancient debris from the walls. Not a very good look, but don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll get it fixed pretty, pretty soon. Under all these bits of trees, I'm going to mine up the obsidian. I actually don't think I need anything else. I think just mining up the obsidian will suffice. Well, I'll test it out anyway and see how it goes. I believe I can just switch the machine on like this, and it's, it's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. Why is that? Oh, no. What a disaster. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong there. I shall turn the machine off for now. And this snow is kind of doing my head in, so um, I'm going to let the snowstorm pass. And rather than sleep through it, I'll spend some time at the raid farm and try and work out exactly what went wrong. And after spending plenty more time at this raid farm, I have more or less got every single thing that I need. All of the glass bottles are in. And as for the spider eyes, that's all the ones that I need. But if I just go something like that, then that, that should actually be enough. The machine will be able to fill the rest of it in by itself. Now, if I grab a few shulker boxes, and I'm going to need quite a few of them because all the items that are in those two chests are going to have to be moved and put into shulker boxes. If I just break them, they're going to go into the system. Everything's going to start breaking. So I really don't want that to happen. Do you know what I want to do with these straggler items right here? I'm going to go and put an ender chest like that, which will block the water. Okay, I've just picked some of up. I don't want that. Then I will set it on fire 
which will burn it all perfect. And if I break the, hold on, I don't want the ender chest to burn, but if I broke it, go like that. Perfect. Hopefully I actually pick up the crafting table. I did. And now all these items like the gunpowder can be collected up like so. We'll grab it all and then they're just going to go into the shulker box. Just a bit of light sorting. There's a little bit more gunpowder there, so I'm going to put that in as well. And as for everything else in here, I'm just going to collect it all up, completely fill my inventory and then take it and throw it into the ocean. Yes, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to miss you guys. Oh, okay, I didn't mean to go. Okay, yeah, you don't need to fall down here with it. Take two. This time, I will not walk forward. So maybe it is kind of a waste to be throwing the sticks out as well, but I can get loads of sticks. It's not exactly like sticks are the rarest thing in the world. And as for the totems, I'm going to keep a few of them because if I dip into my ender chest, as you can see, I have my shulker box full of totems and we can just top it up. Yeah, we might as well, even though I have, you know, more totems than I know what to do with. You can never have too many, I always say, because I don't really fancy dying in this hardcore world for, for, for some reason. Now to grab these final bits of items, and we are going to chuck all of them. I almost chucked you out. You just be careful, little netherite shovel. I haven't chucked anything else important ever. Pretty sure I'm okay. I might as well just keep all these sticks, though, since they're all in one thing. I can just put them in... Yeah, we'll go in there in the in the sugar one for some reason. And I actually realised that that was completely unnecessary, because all these hoppers... Oh, well, not all these hoppers. Some of, uh, Most of these hoppers are completely stacked to the rafters full of emeralds so they can't accept any extra items anyway so that is not a problem we can gather up these chests without having to worry and i'm not entirely sure okay don't you go into that system as i was saying i'm not entirely sure what i actually did with the hoppers that were there before and the comparators but i do need quite a few of them i mean i'll have a quick search in these places looks like there's nothing to be found so i'm going to quickly head to this portal over on the water so that i can get back home go down this chute into the sliced portal at the bottom whilst i'm here i might as well fix these bits of walls as well that i <laughs> stole from before not uh, not the best idea but yeah we don't need to use them so they can go back the room is, is back to how it should be and apparently all my comparators aren't here now I, I, i'm pretty sure i put them somewhere and by somewhere yeah, i put them in this shulker box the shulker box is locked for now but yeah i've got my comparators and the hoppers that i need i might get a few extra actually just to be on the safe side we can easily craft them from in here if we just go ahead and make the hoppers like so that is more than enough now and you know what else will be needed some trusty blockers to set up the item filters so i'm going to grab a load of dirt, I think. That's going to be the best way. I do have an anvil, but you know what? Let's just use some levels and rename them. They're going to be called blockers. I don't think I'll need more than two stacks. Although I've just done the math and it's 36 times four, which is 144, which means three stacks will be more than enough. Now let's fly all the way back up this chute. I just love going up it every time. It's brilliant. Now that I have reached the raid farm, I'm going to grab quite a lot of emeralds. Also shove these shulker boxes down because they're just, just kind of in the way. So there's going to be a hopper here and then hoppers. I, th I think, are these? These, these just going to go down like this, but then there will be a hopper. I can't quite... I can do that. And then we do that. Then these going into all of them. Followed by comparators on top. And then if I sneak on down underneath. All of these extra hoppers... Okay, that's not meant to happen. But uh, as I was saying, these extra hoppers can also be filled with the needed emeralds. I was just short on it by a few emeralds. One of these hoppers is not quite full. It is this one. But now I'm pretty sure every single one is completely filled up, which is great. It means we can now work on the item filters. And you know how I said the spider eyes would be fine if I was just to go like, like I did there? Well, they won't be fine. <laughs> I will need like two and a bit stacks of spider eyes, which isn't a massive problem. I'm sure I'll be able to find some lying around somewhere. In each of these, we're going to be adding the blockers. This is one of those things that I have now done so, so many times. Creating this entire system has just been such a big hassle, like the whole item filter. It probably could have been made in such a way that wouldn't have been so difficult. But I know that it's going to work and it's going to be reliable, which is the main thing. And having all of these items is going to be very, very useful for my next project. Although I can't really do the next project until I have got the remaining spider eyes. And I would like to use the raid farm to get the spider eyes, but that's not really going to work. So instead, I will have to chill at the very, very slow cave spider farm. Over two stacks is the goal. I'm sure it's not going to take me too long. And now I have got more than enough spider eyes for this. Look at that. There's, lo oh, there's absolutely loads of them. I think I've actually ended up getting too many. And to be honest, this will probably be the final time that I ever use this farm because I, I just have no use for it now. My EOL farm gives me all of the string that I could ever dream of. And this raid farm is going to give me all the spider eyes that I could ever need. So yeah, that, that farm, it served its purpose while it was needed. But the uh, cave spider farm is redundant. Let's load these extra ones into here and complete the rest of the item filters. And that is all of them done. The next thing we're going to be doing is grabbing a bunch of emeralds and adding them to 15 of these. As you can see, I don't quite have enough, but if I go like that... It should, yeah, it'll filter some of them out really, really fast. Now my inventory is clogged up with spider eyes. I don't really have enough space for all of that. And that is all of the emeralds now. In fact, we'll just go with stacks. That's all of them done. This one right here, I'm going to need sticks. And whilst I've got the spider eyes, these three hoppers here are going to have them above. So let's go and put all of those in. 
Yeah, look at that. They're filtering out as well, which is perfect. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Let's add the three stacks of sticks into these hoppers. The gunpowder right here, followed by glowstone dust. That's kind of the, the, the one of the pressing things that I need a lot of. And I need redstone. Thankfully, I have this, which has loads of redstone in it. And the redstone is going to be a really useful one. My days of ever needing to collect it should hopefully be over after this. I'm just kind of looking through. You've got to make sure you put the right thing in. If, if I get it wrong, it's just going to mess up the whole system. But as you can see, everything is working according to plan. Finally, the sugar goes in and it's complete. The raid farm is now 100% finished. Well, it's kind of 100% finished. I suppose there's one more thing that I should do. And that is to fly away from the raid farm. Fly up here again, all the way over to the shulker farm, which by the looks of things is nearly overflowing. Look at that. Is that, oh, that this side is overflowing. I think maybe it's time I build a shulker loader for the shulker shells. Cause yeah, we are, well, well, I just never need to worry about these again. But anyway, I'm going to grab loads of them so that I can fill up both of these two shulker boxes. Now to take these away with me and get back to that raid farm. A bunch of wood will be useful to make a bunch of chests. And do you mind? I'm, I'm trying to craft over here. Will you stop uh, crocodiling me? Good sir. <laughs> Just uh, mind your business and, and go after the golem. Anyway, if we now go and fly down here, we've got to be a little bit careful. There we go. We've got this here and this is what is going to be filled up with shulker boxes. I'm gonna make as many as I have space for and get filling up this chest. And these are just gonna all filter so that you can see, you see the shulker boxes somewhere around here. Yeah, they're just all along here so that whenever one of these gets filled up, it will have a new one straight away. Thanks to this system. Look at that, they've already all filtered through. Let's uh, put more in there. This is certainly a lot easier to load than the EOL farm was. I don't know how many shulker boxes it takes to fully load this thing, but I am now well and truly out of wood, which is a bit of a problem. And it still doesn't look like it's going to be full. I don't know, it's, it's taken a lot of shulker uh, shells so far. But hold on a second. It looks like right at the last uh, moment, we have managed to fill it, which is, is really good news because, <laughs> yeah, I was going to be running out. Well, I've got no wood anywhere, as you can see, completely empty. We can keep the shulker boxes with the shulker shells in right here, just in case I ever need them. I think I, I won't be able to get around that side. If I fly into here, I'm going to mine up this crafting table and also light up this place because I don't want any mobs to spawn, but I think they might be able to in here. And I think that's that. I think that is farm well and truly complete. There is only one thing left to do. That is to test it out. Now, there aren't any mobs in here, so I'm going to have to go and find a pillager captain. All these pillagers. I can't seem to find a captain. Okay, never mind. He's down there. Although no sooner have I walked down here and I've, I've completely lost him. <laughs> Where did he go? Unless I saw the banner and he was stood. I, I don't know, actually. Maybe, maybe I just... Completely got mixed up. Well, this time I have definitely found one. Let's get rid of you. And then the raids can begin. I've just stopped for a second because I want to see how well the farm's working. And uh, what do I see behind me? <laughs> what on earth are you doing here? So I'm going to very carefully eat up and then try and, and deal with him. How did you actually, how did you do it? He just escaped. So it is possible for Ravagers to escape in this farm. And I also have so much junk in my inventory, which I can actually just send through the system so we can watch it go see it all in action and you can see all the items that need to be getting picked up are picked up and the rest of them straight into the fire and i might as well also take the items out of the shulker boxes and send them through the system because there's quite a lot of them and it has to be said there is quite a lot of these items but it's also very very satisfying to just send them all in now i'm actually sending too many through i'm going to be careful do, do they actually all get picked up or <laughs> I just sent them to their doom. Yeah, the farm wasn't designed to be able to cope with stacks and stacks of an item at once. I just had to send half a stack at a time. And finally, all these shulker boxes of empty... Well, okay, not these ones, but I, I kind of can keep those just because they look quite nice. I'm just going to be putting these final bits in here. Just let them filter through. I've also got rid of that fire you can see. So if any items do sneak through, I can just go and pick them up and send them right back through the system. And you know what? I'll turn all this sugar cane into sugar for good measure. Fortunately, I don't quite have the inventory space to take every single shulker box. But well, if I put a few of these items inside one of them, then I will have all of the space that I need. I do also want to drop down here and have a look at these chests. See how much we're getting. Look at that. Look at all the emeralds. Okay. Don't know how glowstone dust has got in there. Uh, and none of the other ones appear to have filled up, which is, I guess, makes sense because I haven't been using it long enough. So... I'm going to use it a little bit longer. Let's hope that the farm is actually working correctly as well and, and collecting up all my items. I've had enough of the farm for now, so I'm going to go and grab this box of glowstone dust, which is going to be useful since I will be creating a lot of respawn anchors. Let's also drop off the millions and millions of shulker boxes I have amassed. And before I do get this floor completely finished, I'm going to fly over to spawn because I need to find out a way to try and fix that TNT blaster that completely blew up that was meant to blow up the warped wart stems all that was a bit of a mouthful but yeah i'm just gonna go and fix this machine or at the very least try to fix it top one's been repaired but there's no tnt in it i just want to turn on the machine and see what went so horribly wrong before i think the issue lies here that i used redstone dust and not a repeater hopefully 
That works a bit better. I'm going to change that to be a block as well. Okay, the actual issue was that this repeater wasn't enough. I've changed the vortex delay and it works fine now. And if I just add this redstone dust, we will be able to see it in action. So that piston will extend and then it will come back in. If I stick a piece of TNT in here, we can actually see it properly in action. Just, just to make sure it does definitely work. Look at that. Blew up perfectly. So let's get busy on the one below. And now this little bit of redstone is done as well. So I'm going to put the TNT into all of these and everything should be working. I've just got to make it dispense the TNT a bit less by putting some more items back into the hoppers. And I heard the TNT blow up. <laughs> Hopefully that is a good sign. Here comes some more. Yes, two are coming down. Yeah, blew it up pretty well. And is, is that working perfectly? It looks like it. I think more can grow in their place. It's, it's all coming together, guys. The main thing that decides whether or not they'll grow is whether or not I randomly get a little warped fungi on one of these. As you can see, I'm not really getting them at the moment. So that is then what makes the piston extend and it just keeps trying. As you see, destroys it because it's, we've not got one. Still not got one. And I don't know what the chances are of getting it, but there we go. We've got one that's got bone milled and it has grown. In fact, two of them have grown and the TNT will blow it up, make room for a new one to grow. And just look at all of the warped warp blocks that I am getting in here. Actually, quite a lot, which is perfect. This is way better than mining it. And because the machine does now seem to be working as intended, I think I can put more TNT in without having to worry too much about everything going wrong. So there should be enough TNT to last in there for quite a bit. And I can also go ahead and top up loads of the bone meal. Pretty sure that's also going to keep working even when I'm not in the area, which is the entire idea of it. So I'll put that to the test and move away and instead continue building this tunnel. It's not going to be too far that I'm going to have to dig to get to the EOL farm, but it's still going to be quite the tunnel by the time it's finished. I have dug quite the tunnel here, as you can see, and it has led me right next to where the stronghold portal is. In a way, that's good news because I do want to make a tunnel that leads to the stronghold. But on the other side of the coin, it's also bad news because it means I've still got a long, long way to go before I reach the EOL farm. A big, big part of this tunnel has now been mined out. And I think it's time I grabbed a bunch of slabs because I'm sick of my like you guys all spawning instead if i place down all of these then none of you can spot do you mind trying to hit me in the back like that literally being stabbed in the back by a piglin i've got nowhere near enough slabs to do all of this in my inventory you can see we're on the last ones right there that is the last five i do believe got a long way to go but i'm thinking i should do the basalt first because you can see i'm kind of then i'll know which gaps to be filled in let's grab loads of polished basalt and get to work with the building i've also got to be careful as i get towards the end because there is a big drop straight into lava <laughs> i don't want to just walk off the edge i have successfully reached the big drop I, I should probably put some slabs over this before it becomes too dangerous there we go now to add all of the pillars in between i have run out of basalt nothing i can't quickly craft and it has to be said it's really starting to come together. As you can see, the pillars all the way down there are done. And I'm just completing the ones on this side as well. I've found that the best way to do it is instead of doing the pillar all the way to the top, just to count every four blocks and just get the actual foundations in. And then when that's done all the way to the other end, like it is now, I can go and add all these top bits all the way along and i just don't have to think about it anymore everything i know is marked in the correct place and so that is mission successful with all of those time for all these warped warp blocks which i think i'm gonna have more than these and i know what to do with by the end of today and i want to begin by placing netherrack behind all the pillars just so that no mobs can spawn inside the walls and then all these gaps can be filled in with the warped wart which really is a very satisfying thing to do because it just brings the entire thing together and it looks like building the farm has been a massive success because i was gonna say because i have enough <laughs> to finish the entire thing I, I, I will have enough if I just go ahead and mine out these two here. They can just be changed to be nether quartz or something like that. And I have the perfect amount now for all of them to be done. And that means I have the opportunity to instead get myself loads of polished blackstone, turn it into slabs, and fill in the entirety of this floor. It's also very nice to finally be filling in this big drop into the lava. And now that I've made it all the way to the end, this is probably as good a time as any to go and check on how my warped ward farm is actually doing has it been working okay in the background? And the answer is a very, very resounding yes. It has been doing insanely well in the background. And this is why when I have to go out manually getting items, I just make a farm because I'll never have to worry about this ever again. It's even completely exceeded my own expectations. I'm going to have to go and get some shulker boxes. And the perfect colour for these are going to be cyan because basically... I I can barely tell the difference between the two. Also me, I'm also going to grab all of these stems and take them home with me. But from that farm in that short time, I got over two shulker boxes worth. Should be enough, you know, 
more than I ever need. I will need to top that farm up with TNT, of course, but it doesn't really use up that much TNT for the amount you, that you get. I mean, you could see it was still going after all that time. It is quite a slow using TNT farm. Let's put all of these into this chest. Look at that, that's brilliant. And I'll put one full shulker box in here as well. And I will still need a lot of the warped wart to do this roof, so it's time we started mining. The bit that I'm breaking right here is where all of these stairs are going to be going. And this middle bit is for the warped wart. Don't know how many times I've said warped wart today, but it has been way too many. And that is all of that successfully done. So all the, all the mining of this tunnel up to this part is complete, which is, is a nice thing to see. And if I just dip into here... In fact, I don't want to grab these ones yet. I'm going to use the one that's kind of partly used. Yeah, well, there's not really going to be enough to go out here, but all I'm going to be doing here is just filling in this roof with the warped wart. And if I look at this at the perfect angle, then I can do it without having to jump as well. And this method does work fairly well, but as you can see, I, I made quite a few mistakes. <laughs> if I, it looks really bad when you look all the way down there. Let's go into my ender chest and grab the hoe, and I can easily tidy up all of the mistakes that I made. And mission to add the entire ceiling has been completed. Let's go into the black stone chest. We can grab a few stairs, but we're going to need to grab a few more as well. Should really use a stone cutter rather than the crafting table to craft all those, because you actually get a lot more for what you're crafting if you use a stone cutter. So I kind of just waste a load of blackstone right before my very eyes. But regardless of whether or not I'm doing a lot of wasting, I still have enough stairs to complete the entire roof. And in my opinion, this is looking really, really good. Look at that. I can just fly all the way down here. Yes, I would like to add lanterns in between. And I also, apparently, I didn't fill in these bits of walls that need to be done. But it really is an excellent, excellent build. I think I'm going to be building an entranceway down there. So I can go and get the to the stronghold portal. And if I fly all the way back along this tunnel to the shulker box, which is here, I think. Not that shulker box. Not that shulker box. But this shulker box contains lanterns. It contains chains. It's probably not going to be enough for me to finish it all the way. But I might as well add as many as I can. Seems like chains are actually the thing that I'm running out of the most. I can actually go and craft some more because I've got some all the way... Well, I've got some iron back there. If I, I've got so much iron, I don't know what to do with it all, really. And I probably have enough lanterns to just do the entire thing. So let's go into here to grab those. Make myself a load of nuggets. Then I can make a load of chains. Hopefully these 26 should be enough to get it finished. As I say, that is successfully done, but I'm I'm one lantern short. Are you kidding me? I've got all the torches that I would need to do it, but I'd, I'd need some iron. But don't worry, if it's iron that I seek, I'm sure I've got some in this shulker... Not in that shulker box. Don't worry, there's plenty more. <laughs> what about the iron block shulker box? Yeah, there's definitely iron in there. That can make the final lantern and that means that this entire corridor is complete up to the part that I got up to. If I want to get all the way to the AOL farm it'll be much much longer but <laughs> I ain't got time for that right now. Also I lied about it being complete because um, as you can see I put slabs around the lamps here and what that means is that we need more slabs around the lamps all the way down here. And despite my best intentions I can already tell I am going to run out. Yep I was right. I don't know about how, by how many though. Uh, we don't need that many more. If I craft these into slabs yeah 60 should be enough. There we go. They're all complete and now the corridor is completely finished and I can move on to another project. First phase and that other project is to head to spawn and then whilst at spawn I need to top up this and I do believe I am now out of TNT as well which is probably why I'm not getting quite as much as I was before but realistically for now I've got loads and loads I don't really need to worry about getting more TNT I will in the future it's not a problem but for now I'm just going to switch it off and yeah it doesn't need to be running anymore <laughs> we've got more than I could ever dream of and my only worry is that from digging all those tunnels in the nether my pickaxe is quite broken now. I do have a whole host of different XP farms to choose from, but since I want to get a lot of the items that the raid farm offers, such as the redstone, the emeralds, the glowstone, I think using the raid farm as my main XP farm is going to be the best thing for me. You can also see just how many levels I went up today in this episode, like we're on 349 now, nearly 350. But it does get you quite a lot of XP pretty, pretty fast. Let's put the pickaxe in my offhand and start using the farm. All my items have now been healed, and so I can begin the next big project, the Emerald Palace. It's not really the best weather for me to be showing you this, but right in this forest is where I want this Emerald Castle to be. So to build it, I am going to have to demolish the entire forest. I'm going to have to get rid of loads and loads of these trees. Although right now I'm really not enjoying being out in this weather. I, I hate rain in real life and in Minecraft. So I'm going to go inside where it's warm and instead gather up loads and loads of materials that I'm going to need. And look at the things. One of the main ones I'm going to need is lots and lots of green concrete. Now 21 is sadly not going to be enough. I have got a bit of gravel in here which, which should be okay to do the job but the main thing that I'm really lacking is sand. So that means that I get to go to the one place where it never rains. Yes that is correct I will be going to the desert to get loads of sand. To be honest it's not the one place that never rains. I suppose the nether is another place where it never rains and all around my house it technically snows not rain so that's another one. And the savannah. Yeah it doesn't rain here so yeah I've kind of outdone myself. Anyway let's forget about that because we do know that it doesn't rain in a desert 
And that is where I am right now. So let's mine up the colossal amount of sand that I'm going to need. Since I will not only be needing the sand for the concrete, but also for a lot of glass as well. Because, yeah, there's going to be a lot of windows and stuff. I always like windows in castles and big builds like that. So there's going to be plenty of glass in there. And some glass domes at the top as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to look very, very good. It's just going to take a lot of materials. And the day that the Minecraft developers add it so that you can renewably farm sand without needing a duplicator... Uh, It'll be a special, special day. There is some cool data packs which allow you to get it from husks and stuff, but uh, nothing in vanilla so far. All three shulker boxes have now been filled. Let's grab them all. And I'll head back home. I'm going to craft as much of the concrete as I can. I'm not entirely sure if I'm able to do it all because I actually going to need 4,000 pieces. Yeah, this palace is going to be quite the project and it's going to be very, very big indeed. I've also seemed to have apparently left a few... Uh, why have I left these behind? I mean, these two shulker boxes... They belong in the ender chest, nice and safe and sound. I've just worked it out and I actually need 60 stacks of concrete, which means two of these shulker boxes more or less won't be needed. So that's kind of good news. I don't need too much of a ridiculous amount. I'm just going to get rid of these extra bits. The bad news, though, is that I do not have enough gravel. No, in here I have just, well, about 9, 10 stacks of it. So if I grab all the gravel and top up my inventory with sand, as you can see, we can make quite a few stacks, but we're, actually we're going to need a load more dye. It's a good job I have a ridiculously big cactus farm, isn't it? Yeah, you can see we've got quite a lot there. Um, we can also grab those, but we are out of gravel. Let's turn a bunch of the powder into concrete and then go searching for gravel. I will need to just repair my shovel before I do any mining for gravel. And because I can't be bothered to go to a pillage outpost so I can use the raid farm, I'm actually going to first come to the bartering farm. Yeah, this is a, a little uh, blast from the past, isn't it? But if we give these guys a load of gold, they will happily be bartering away with that. And in the meantime, I can be repairing my shovel at the gold farm. Now then, have you guys successfully bartered all my gold? You guys go through it. So, okay, I don't say I, I thought you had already, but no, you've... Uh, You've got loads of it. No, you haven't. I don't know if you have, actually. Well, here's more for you anyway. And from that, I have managed to get quite a significant amount of gravel. Nowhere near as much as I'm actually going to need. But for the time being, it's perfect. Because I can also now go through this portal, which is very conveniently going to lead me to the ocean, as you can see. And what is on the ocean floor, guys? You know it. Loads and loads of seagrass. Yeah, there's seagrass everywhere. There's kelp. It's brilliant. No, but in reality, I'm down here to collect all of the gravel. Now, when I'm doing this, most of the gravel does tend to float up to the surface because from up here, I can just swim around and collect it all up. I'm to wonder if I've actually got enough inventory space for all this because I've already filled a shulker box up and I did get a little bit carried away with all the gravel that I mined. But it looks like I've collected it all up and... Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I had a lot more space in my inventory than I actually realised. So with that, I'm going to get back home, craft all the rest of the concrete powder that I'm going to need. I believe with that, I have got all of the powder that I need. Now to take loads of this sand and set it off smelting into glass. I actually don't really have enough coal for that farm to be running, but I'm just going to leave it as it is and instead continue turning the powder into concrete. I've converted most of the powder into concrete, but it, it just takes so long I can't be bothered with it anymore. When I need more of it during the build, I'll sort it, but for now, I've got all the places I need to go. One of those places is the Guardian Farm. Now the main situation with the Guardian Farm is the new 1.18 update completely broke it because there's now loads of caves below my feet. Mobs are spawning in these caves, meaning not as many guardians are coming through. As you can see, it's, it's a lot slower than it used to be. And I was hoping I'd have enough prismarine shards to make all the blocks that I need, but it's, it's going to look like that is not going to be the case, because I'm going to need stacks and stacks of prismarine bricks, probably like a similar amount to the concrete, and not to mention I want to make a load of dark prismarine as well. So since this is most definitely going to be a problem, I mean, I don't know how many we've got here, not many at all, it is time for plan B. And the idea for plan B is to first go back to my house, and then all the way to spawn. This is just so that I can turn the mob switch back on. And now I wish to head to a brand new ocean monument. Thanks to the mob switch, there are no guardians here, so I can easily mine up and do work without being attacked every two seconds. I will eventually fix my guardian farm by spawn proof in all the caves, and that way I'll be able to do what I need to do without getting attacked every two seconds. This is a big portal dome, which is what the guardians are going to float through. And now I just need to remove all of this seagrass and the kelp and these blocks around the edge as well. And to do the next thing, I'm going to need quite a bit of dirt. Thankfully, getting hold of dirt is one of the easier things for me to do. I also need a bunch of bricks, loads of this, and plenty of chests and hoppers to collect the items. To be honest, I don't think that's going to be enough chests, so let's go and just craft a load more. Going through some precious wood. I do need to get more at some point. Although I have loads of spruce logs in there. You know what? We can get 32 from that. That's definitely enough. And the only other thing I will need is some campfires. I'll need 10 of them, and thankfully they're pretty easy to craft. Although, can I only craft 9? Of course I can only craft 9. Although, if I get a few more sticks. The fact that my raid farm has got so many sticks just waiting for me is a bit annoying. I've actually got more campfires than I need. And the very final thing to grab is going to be a load of fence gates. I'm going to use the warp stem. That's like my most, uh, well, the wood I have the most of at the moment. So I can easily get planks and sticks, and then from there make the gates. It is probably one of the more simpler farms, and it's not actually going to get me XP. It's it's also pretty easy to do it so it does get you XP, but 
I'm probably not going to worry about it for now. It would just make more sense for me to make my original Guardian farm work again rather than do that because that is getting me XP from the cactus as well whilst I'm there. But as a quick fix, this new little Guardian farm is going to be perfect. First things first, I need to place loads of dirt in here so that I'll be able to actually light the portal. And if I mine out this middle bit, I'm going to my ender chest and find the flint and steel. I can easily light it. There we go. And even if I get rid of the dirt now, the portal will stay. Now to build a bit of a platform out here, which is going to allow me to remove a load of the source blocks. It's quite a big area to be filled in. And this is actually the main reason that I brought so much dirt. And platform number one is now complete. Let's go to this side and do the exact same thing. I think I've discovered that if I'm in the water, I can actually place the dirt way, way faster than if I'm doing it like this from up here, just being careful. Well, <laughs> I'll have one dirt in my hand, but you know what I mean? If I'm going like that, it's a bit slow, but when I'm in the water, it really seems to speed it up. Just a few more dirt blocks to go. And this is how I'm going to create the flowing water that is going to push the guardians into the portal. This is why it needs to be such a big platform, but it is almost done. And there we go. It is complete. Let us go back into this chest. We can get rid of the dirt. I don't know how I've managed to get so much kelp. Now it's time for the building blocks because we need to make a nice little border all the way around. That is now complete and looking very, very good indeed. The next thing we will be needing are these trusty fence gates. I need to come across and on the ninth block I have a row of fence gates. Of course my shulker box is in the way. Of all the rows for me to put it on, I put it on the one where it shouldn't be. And then behind all of these fence gates, we're going to have another row of fence gates. Although these are a little bit more finicky because I have to kind of crouch and place them slowly, which is a little bit annoying. But now they are all in and I mustn't forget the most important thing. I need to open them all. No, if they're closed, everything would go wrong. That is all of those successfully open. Let's get rid of the temporary block. And you guessed it, we're going to do it on the other side. The exact same thing, only this time I'm going to open them as I go. You know what? A little uh, time save in there, guys. Although I won't be opening this row as I go because <laughs> it's finicky enough. I have to be crouched, otherwise I'll be opening by mistake. And I, I can't bother. Yeah, that, that's just too annoying to try and do that. There we go. That is mission accomplished with all of the fence gates. Once I open them all like so. Once I go into this shulker box and grab myself a couple of buckets, this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the magic will happen. So we're going to place a bucket there and a bucket there. And as you can see, we can just do infinite water sources all the way across. And it's what happens when it gets over here that's quite interesting. Let's just fill those up. As you can see, it kind of flows under the gates. So if we, I then crouch, and we have to do it on every single one place water, which is, is going to be a little bit annoying to do. But if I just show you a sneak preview as I'm going along, you can see it goes underneath, but it kind of connects. So the, the, the guardians will get pushed and then they'll end up going up into the next one and get pushed into the portal. So the potential is there for it to work, but I've still got a few things left to do to make it happen. That is all the water on this side completed. Now to do the exact same thing on this side. And there we go, all completed. Now for the nether side, as I said, I'm not going to make it too complicated in the way that I link the portals. I'm just going to clear a big space on this one. I haven't manually connected these. This is just the one that Minecraft has naturally generated it. But all these blocks underneath are going to be removed just so I have plenty of space to work with. And next there is going to be, look at that, that was a nice little landing, wasn't it? But yeah, there's going to be some walls around here just to leave a little two by two gap. The guardians will be able to fall into these holes right here and they'll have a roof so that they can't escape. And the exact same thing is going to be done on this side. There we go. That's where the guardians shall be trapped. Let's extend it a little bit at the bottom. I'm only going to extend it by two blocks. Okay, what's going on here? It's all gone wrong. I went and placed the block wrong. Then we had netherite getting involved. We're going to go and put some there. This is going to come all the way down so that these have nowhere to go. Oh my God, again? Okay, I apparently I've run out of building blocks. Although if I'm not mistaken, I would have said we'd have some in there. You know what? Maybe maybe we just go on with netherite. Do we, do we make this a really bodge job? Yeah, it's, it's not looking too good. It? Let's just add these campfires in here and then the chests can be placed along like so Although if I kept the chests like this I as you can see would not be able to open them because the blocks are in the way But don't worry items will be able to go through them I'm just going to use the hoppers and place them into the chest so anything will come through the camp any items Yeah, they'll come through the campfires into the hoppers and then there could be another row of chests under here Those chests will also have hoppers going into them. Oh my goodness. It wasn't it a great thing the day they added crawling to Minecraft It makes Minecraft so so much easier to do things like that. You just you know, you just go up and down and you're in. And since I've got a bit of space, I might as well add some chests and hoppers on the edges as well. Oh, this is a little bit tricky to place, but I can still do it. So all of these chests should definitely be able to keep up with the amount of drops the Guardians will be giving me. And that part is complete. The Guardians will go through there, no problem whatsoever. For some reason, I didn't go through that portal and I've, I've come all the way over here to, to go back. I don't know, I could have just gone through that one, no problem. But not to worry, the journey there should not take me too long. And here is my little humble farm. Time to start placing this all over, which will push the Guardians up. And if I'm ever short on a bit of air, all I have to do is just go in here and Look at that, I can get my breath back. I might get pushed up, but I can easily get out. Now to go around a layer lower and just keep doing that, kind of just going with the shape of the monument. And on this bottom layer, it needs to go everywhere underneath 
where the dirt is. So basically all the way up to that block, I, I managed to judge it correctly. Let's bring this around here. Yeah, it still needs to be a bit further this way, just up to there. And that means that all of this kelp has got to go. And I marked out the full area for this that needs to be filled in. So now it's time to place it all down. That is this side complete. And this side, I was about to say is also almost, also complete, but I'm... I'm kind of stuck here and I how do I even get down? I'm, I'm in a very a very tough spot. There we go. If I'm if I'm careful I can do that. Then I can place it. Now that bit's finished. I've just got this little bit right here and I have plenty of blocks to do that. Perfect. That is looking very very good indeed. Now to delve into my ender chest and grab some scaffolding and place it down so it takes me all the way up to y equals 184. And it also turns out that I can't count because it's going to be taking me to y185. Better clarify this. Okay. So the scaffolding takes me to 184. And then I'm going to place some blocks, which apparently I have no blocks. But these blocks will take me to 185. I'm also doubling up the slabs so that nothing can spawn here. I'll stand in this little bit right here. And I want a couple of blocks and then a slab to protect me from anything like phantoms or, you know, anything like that, basically. Remember the rule. Always protect your head. So this part of the farm is done. Pretty much everything is done. Except for one thing, okay. Oh, well, nice one, SP. Good job, totems are in the game. They weren't. I get the feeling that my hardcore series would have ended a long, long time ago. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and break the scaffolding, which, as usual, is very, very satisfying. A lot of it is probably just going to get lost because it's all going to go into the portal. And the final thing to be done before the farm is complete is to remove all of the dirt, which is also all going through the portal. Yes, yeah, we're just losing it all. Hey, we know the farm's working. If the dirt is getting pushed into the portal, then we know that the guardians are going to get pushed into the portal. And oh, no, dolphin, hold on for dear life. I don't see how you get out of this one alive, mate, honestly. You were too squid, yeah, you're going the same way. Because if I break this... Wait, can you can you do it? Can you survive? He can swim away! They call me the dolphin lifesaver, guys. Side one is done. Now to also mine up side number two. And just like that, the world's simplest guardian farm is now done. I might as well just nip through the portal. And I can grab any items that came through. Or maybe they went into the hoppers, I don't know. So I'm just going to try and... Get a... <laughs> I'm kind of stuck now. What's going on? There we go. If we go back through, I reckon the farm's ready for testing. I could make it to XP farm if I was just more clever with the portals and the positioning of them in the nether, which I may change at some point. But for now, I'm not going to be worrying about that. Instead, the main goal will be to head to spawn, turn off the mob switch, and go AFK at the farm. And just look at it from there. Already, you can see loads of guardians are spawning in. All I have to do is just perch myself inside of here, and many, many guardians will spawn and get pushed through the portal. Well, I've AFK'd here for a long, long time. Let's get in the mix and see just how many items I have got. And looking at the state of these chests, it, is, <laughs> it has been a very, very successful mission. So I'm going to start gathering all of these up and crafting the bricks. And that is all the prismarine bricks that I need. It's, it's taken a lot. And now this ghast has come to ruin my day. In fact, there's two of them. How have you seen me from all the way over here? Oh my god, don't hit my uh, my build. You're going to get it. And you know what? You're going to get it as well. Just trying to peacefully murder a load of guardians and then use those drops to make bricks. So most of my shards have been used up. I think there's some in these chests, but I, I can't really get into them. I might even... I have to do something like that and then I can... I can okay, well, these just are very full. But the bonus of this farm is it gets you ink sacks as well, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do. I think, anyway. As I say, I thought I'd forgotten how to craft Dark Prismarine. It's because I didn't turn it into Black Dye. That is how you do it. So, yeah, we, sh we should be able to get quite a bit. We're going to need 23 stacks in total. Seems like the main thing I'm going to be short of to do all of this is going to be the ink sacks. Yep, that is indeed the case because this is the last of my Black Dye. So when I craft this Dark Prismarine, that is all that I'm going to be able to do. And we're short by... About nine stacks. Hang on a minute. We found 46 more. <laughs> Sadly, that won't really go very far, but uh, it is better than nothing. And when I search the chest, I am finding a few straggling ink sacks. Look at that. There's a stack in there waiting. Hang on a minute. These chests here might just hold the key. Never mind. <laughs> They're all empty. More to the point. How on earth has a chicken got here? There's always chickens. They're just You just never know how chickens get around, here. And Now he's literally in the way. Right. You either move or you're going on those campfires. Don't say I didn't warn you. In you go, chicken. Okay. You, there you go. <laughs> I actually felt way too evil doing that. Let's just patch it all up. Right, the last of the ink sacks and craft the last of the shards. And to finish this, I'm going to need another six stacks of dark prismarine. So I reckon the best thing I can do is fly back to my house. And obviously going through the nether is going to be way, way faster. And see what I've got lying around in my chest room. Because we've got a chest for it. We've got 37. That's a step in the right direction. All these other ones are pretty useless. Only 21 in there. I'm not happy with that. And poor people, they use ink sacks when they want loads of black dye. But I'm rich, so I use wither roses for black dye. Yes, that's... Uh, that's how we do it. Grab a couple of extra stacks for good measure. And then I think we fly back to this guardian farm. And then fly up to the surface to farm more of the prismarine shards. And to be honest, if I turn this into an XP farm, I could also get looting from it as well. Yeah, you know what? It does have its benefits. But we won't be doing that today. <laughs> We've got a palace to build. The rain is pouring, but I'm pretty sure... I should have now got enough from all of these guardians. I should also probably spawn proof the walls around here because <laughs> mobs keep spawning on there. Alrighty, if this is how I die in, uh, in my world, that, that would not be good. I've uh, 
I've fallen onto the campfires. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a very good idea, but I can mine my way out and safely get back to harvesting the prismarine and turning it into blocks. And I reckon with all of that, I have now definitely got enough. And so the Guardian Farm is going back to being pretty much useless to me. But hey, maybe one day I'll be back and I'll improve it, turn it into something special. But for now, it's time to focus on building the palace. Another thing I'm going to need quite a lot of is the green stained glass, which we we've got a lot of glass in there, but we also have the issue of loads of sand all around here and and nothing to smelt it with. So my plan to solve that problem is to try and find a brand new cave. We have got one here. The goal is just to get a load of coal. But at some point, I definitely need to come up with a better fuel source for my super smelter. Whether that's going to be lava, bamboo, something like that. Because when you've been playing Minecraft for 3,300 days, mining should be a thing of the past. But I suppose it is kind of nice to get back to your roots sometimes and just, just you know, go back to the classic days. After all, literally half of the game is about mining. You know, it's Minecraft, so <laughs> I can't complain too much. And... To be honest, coal is everywhere as well. It's really easy to find. And the size of the veins is just amazing. Couple that with Fortune 3, and already I have got three and a half stacks. And there's loads more in this cave as well. And oh my goodness, it's like they make coal more common, even though this is one of the caves that was generated in the old updates, I've never seen a cave like this. Just everywhere I turn, there is coal galore. This section of the cave is also packed with coal, and after much, much mining, I have more or less filled up the whole inventory. Although I can throw away some bits and bobs like these, and continue mining up a bit more coal. And look at this, I found a dungeon as well. Although sadly, nothing very useful in it. And now my inventory is well and truly full, I'm just gonna have to get rid of a bit of cobblestone, and then I think I will head back home. But this has been a very, very successful mining journey. In fact, I, I want to take all this coal with me, I'm gonna make a bunch of coal blocks and then I can fit it. And with that, let's get out of here. So my plan is to load every single furnace with a stack of coal. I couldn't quite do these last few furnaces, but they usually have coal. You know, they don't use as much coal as these earlier ones, so that's pretty good. More glass is once again on the menu and it all needs to be dyed green. Once again, green dye. We have loads and loads of that. And then shoved in a shulker box. There's also a lot of other materials, but the main ones I have now successfully got. I'm also going to need 45 stacks of emerald blocks, which is why I made the raid farm. I have already got 22, but I'm curious to see if my raid farm actually has plenty more. Hopefully it does, but if not, then I may have to spend more time AFK there. Yeah, so there is quite a lot here. And I have also realised something whilst like things like sugar and all the other ones are going into this first hopper, and it's because... I need to add some item filters up there, which are like shulker box sorters. So I'll make sure to get those added before the next time I use the farm. And let's see if we have enough emerald blocks. So I have crafted every single emerald block. I think we have enough. Never mind, I've just done the calculations and we're short by like 50 emerald blocks. But I'll just worry about those later on and do as much as I can for now. All of this glowstone from the raid farm is now going to come in handy because I need to make quite a lot of redstone lamps. The real worry here is that I might not actually have enough redstone. Although don't worry, there's always plan B, which is to grab a bunch of emerald blocks and trade for redstone at this trading hall. That's definitely got me way, way more. And I can go back round again with all these villagers. And I think that will be mission accomplished for all the redstone lamps I need. So let's keep collecting all of the resources. Although I do still need a bit more redstone. So I'm okay. We found a cave as well. That's good news. And it's even connected to a dungeon. Come on, give me a notch apple. Okay. <laughs> Close enough. Although I suppose it's not really close enough, so that's got to go. More importantly, I shall try and track down redstone, which I appear to have successfully done. I built the raid farm so that I'd have loads of redstone, but I, I took so much redstone to do all of the hoppers that I am once again having to go look for redstone. It's possible that I will never be able to escape this cycle. Found another dungeon in this cave. Let's get rid of that. Anything useful at all? Doesn't look like it. But I'll take the coal since I went mining for that earlier. And as cool as this cave is, I've got all of the redstone that I need. And so it is time for me to get out of here. And I'm happy with all the stuff that I've got so far. And so my next project is going to be to clear the space where this palace will go, which involves mining a load of trees and mining the ground. And that is the area completely cleared out. I was mining this layer here, but I've realized it, it actually doesn't need to go, so <laughs> kind of wasted my shovel a little bit there. But now I can chuck all of these items into storage. I have to say, I really love having an auto sorter. That has made it so, so much easier. I'm going to gather up a few more needed materials and then work on this emerald palace can begin. Of course, it starts raining just as I'm going to build. Yeah, did not what I wanted. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to begin by creating the entranceway. This is going to have like some stairs going up to the main building. And I'm going to add some lighting in the floors with glowstone in the middle. There we go and now we can begin on the stairs which are going to go along like this although apparently i've made a stupid mistake not brought any concrete which means i'm going to have to fly through this blizzard grab a shulker box or two and fill them up with concrete okay this isn't going to work my inventory is just too full of other stuff all of that can go over here for now and then i can make much faster progress all of this does still need to be converted from powder into concrete but i will do that later because for now it is time to get back to work on the build the stairs are going to be split up into three groups like this and yeah they're going to go like like that so you can see wider in the middle and then shorter in the in the center and i'm going to just add 
stairs along like so. And this is how the staircase is looking. It's looking very nice indeed. And there's going to be a load of green concrete up here, which can be stood on. And that will lead to the main entranceway, which is going to be right here. I've marked out the general area of it. So there's going to be yeah, two doors right here. And I'm also going to have a load of prismarine. Because that's what a lot of the walls are going to be as well. And I might as well get started on building these big, massive walls. Although before I do that, there is also going to be some big pillars along here at the sides of each of the stairs. Which are going to be covered in emerald blocks like so. And have a nice little cross like that of dark prismarine and the entrance way is also going to have big pillars going up like this they're going to be mainly emerald they're going to connect up to the like the other walls and stuff and i've run out of emeralds thankfully there's plenty more where that came from and by the size of how far these pillars up you can probably see just how big this building is going to go well hey it's got to be big so that all those villagers actually have somewhere to live so i'm going to build the same little box on this side as well as the same thing with the pillar and with this one i made it all the way up to the roof and can actually connect it to the other pillar i could connect it if i hadn't run out of dark prismarine thankfully there's plenty more in here and now they can be connected and there's also going to be a couple of pillars in the middle which are going to have redstone lamps at the bottom so we're just going to have those for you know for a bit of lighting so we can see what we're doing followed by more prismarine and emeralds going up the entrance way is really starting to take shape isn't it although it doesn't look like much of an emerald palace just yet so let's grab a bit of glass and then this big wall behind the pillars can also be completed that is the entrance way complete and it's just going to have loads of prismarine around it and that is the front wall all done and i do want to add some little platforms at this level and these are going to have some more redstone lamps on them as well i'm connecting up all of these pillars as well and it has to be said the more that i do the better it looks and i think that the best thing i can do now is just build some walls that are going to go all the way around and just yeah, get those foundations and i should probably deal with this creeper i can just see it you know, you blowing some up, ruining everything. Well, that's what I get for leaving my mob switch turned off. And I've done the lowest level of all of the walls, which means I have a guide to fill in the concrete floor in between. And that is the entire floor completed. I've left a gap here because there's going to be a pillar covering this up anyway. And the next thing to be done is to build these walls up even more. Work can also begin on some of the smaller windows. There's going to be a bunch of them in different places. So yeah, one there, one there, one there. And then there's going to be a big one at the back, which will involve placing down a lot of green stained glass. I took a little bit of a break from building because because I do need a lot more emerald blocks. And I'm hoping that a few more shulker boxes have come through the system. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So we got one more. I was going to say they're all kind of different ones. But there's two emerald ones. So that's perfect. Eventually, I'll get around to fixing the system. So that they go into the correct ones. And then we don't have sticks and sugar in random ones. But for now, I can leave all those guys in there. Craft the final missing emerald blocks. And get back to building. And I have to say, from a distance, it is starting to look very, very good. I just need to continue building all of these walls. And I've pretty much done all of the walls to the top. I'm going to be starting to work on the roof. We seem to have already had a villager moved in. The wandering trader has found his way here. Now this ceiling is going to be made out of green concrete, which is one of the reasons why I needed so much of it. I've left a nice little gap here for a chandelier. That's this half complete. And now to do the same thing on this side, which I would complete, but unfortunately I've, uh, I've run out of green concrete. There's none in any of my shulker boxes. So I'm going to fly back home, grab a load of this powder and turn it all into concrete. All of the concrete has been converted. I have got more than enough in this shulker box. So let's hope Hopefully get this building finished. But I'm going to have to be quick because I have not got too much time left. And the sun is now setting on day 3300. I've just got the night to finish this entire build and I'm still working on the roof. I'm sure you'll agree that it's looking very good indeed. But it is now a race against time to get it finished. And the bad news here is that I have now run out of dark prismarine because I had to make a load of prismarine stairs. I've already eaten into the next episode, which I'm not supposed to do. But I've come this far with the project. I won't be stopped now because here is where all the guardian drops are and i'm pretty sure i've got plenty of prismarine shards and there's also new ink sacks in the chest as well so let's get crafting and i'm pretty sure those two and a half stacks should be enough but just in case i will fill this shulker box with prismarine shards as well that should be mission accomplished let's get this building finished well despite going a little bit over time this roof is so so close to being done although i've been thwarted at the last second i am I am two pieces of glass short. It's all right. I've got everything I need in my house. I just have to quickly fly down here. In fact, I've got 24 in this chest. Okay, well, why are they just sitting there? They could have been useful. And now they will be useful. But look at it. It looks pretty amazing, if you ask me. But those two gaps get filled in. And then there's just some little bits up here that need to be done as well. That's these four towers complete. And the last part is to complete this bit right here. And there we go. The roof is complete. And this is what it looks like. It's, it's a completely different thing. I think it just looks brilliant just sat behind the village. A massive 
Emerald Palace. I really can't wait to decorate it all, make it look amazing, sort out the interior. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not completely finished right yet, right now. For a start, there's a, there's a massive hole in the floor. But you know what I do think I have time for? I think I have time to grab a couple of iron doors and make four iron chest plates and then place them on the entranceway like so. There is still going to be a staircase going up here. I need to get it so those lights are on. There's going to be a second floor up there as well. Some chandeliers in both of those gaps. It's, it's going to look amazing when it's completely done, but so far... It is looking great. I mean, the outside looks absolutely amazing. That's why we need a raid farm to put those emeralds to good use. And these villagers all down here, I'm sure they are going to be very, very pleased with this. And I also need to terraform the land around it. As you can see, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit far off the ground. But the sun is setting. I've, <laughs> I've gone well over time. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was 3,202 days <laughs> in hardcore Minecraft.